Ready to go live? And we're live for the LLT site clinic. Welcome, BB Lauren Raven, and welcome, Martin McDonald. Hi. Hello. So everybody says my it. name uh, wrong. They all say Lauren, oh. but it's it's uh, Lori or uh, Lori. Yes. Lori. And uh, uh, as we as we mentioned your name, is, is BB your real name? Yeah, it's my real name. So my dad is Indonesian and I'm half Indonesian and Bibi means grandmother. And uh -huh. I suppose he was really wrinkled when I was born. So that's Bibi. <laughs> and okay. Lori, is, uh, Lori is from a uh, Viking comic uh, series. Uh -huh. Okay. So it's a little, little Viking princess or something. I don't know. Cool. You've got a yeah. real story to your name. Yeah. What about you, yeah. Martin? Uh, well, I, only, I only ever get, um, oh, like the hamburgers. Um, oh, and, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. And mm. people misspelling my name McDonald's, not McDonald's, which is. Oh, yeah. Which oh, happened to me as well. I wasn't going to bring it up. you replaced did the job. I All right, let's get started. Yeah. <laughs> All of you guys out there, you know how the game works. And if not, we got these sites from people who want us to audit them in public. So we will try to pinpoint some you know low-hanging fruit some problems that experienced SEOs and link builders see but this is not a full audit so this is the disclaimer don't take this for real don't expect BB or Martin to do the same for your uh, website in, in 10 minutes you know just quickly um, it, it's a lot more time usually but uh, we got a lot of great feedback that is very very helpful for a lot of people and uh, yeah we start right with a glass of Venice here yeah we, we already have a troll in the comments it's Badams. Oh, <laughs> Badams. Hey, Badams. How are you doing? Oh, yeah, he can't talk back. That worked oh, better yeah. in two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's start with the uh, glass of Venice here and, uh, yeah, remove Badams uh, here. Um, yeah. Glass of Venice. Okay. So these are uh, uh, Murano glass. Uh, URL, I'm going to pull it up here as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Glass of Venice. Mm -hmm. Dot com. Dot com, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Ooh. I would say right from the start, <clears throat> you either found a way to block us at Link Research Tools, despite we go around all these blocks and all robots TXT and that, or you really only have seven domains linking to you. So without any further ado, you need links. You need more links. And luckily we have luckily we have Bibi here for that. Oh, yeah, that's I true. only see seven, <laughs> seven domains linking. I mean, yeah, we could just about one or two of them, but um Yeah, so let me just see what they have. Yeah. Um, oh wait, Martin is back. Hey Martin. Uh, yeah. My, my, I noticed my camera had frozen, and it's um, since I moved on to a new camera setup and I moved into this office, it, it seems to happen like twice an hour. So, if I if I stop moving, then you know, uh, just to reply to Barry, it's we'll, not. We'll put you back in. Yeah. Wonderful. Exactly. Yeah. So, BB, what yeah. what's the deal? How would you help this company to build some links? Because if they don't have any links, but you no said ranking. you're. You said there were only eight links. How? I mean, yeah, I see way more in um, Ahrefs. Is that oh, really? Yeah. Oh, look at that. Um, Source domain yeah. seven. Huh. So I see uh, 843 referring domains. Oh, interesting. And then, yeah. Uh, 10,000 backlinks. Okay. That sounds a lot more as I would expect. You know, when we do a quick backlink check, maybe our crawler had some flaw in here, which always, you know, happens. And uh, that's the beauty about live shows, always bring up some extra adrenaline. Uh, the quick backlink check is not, no, no. There's something broken in our system, that's for sure. But uh, if you have Atres open, uh, feel free to share it. Um, then we can yeah. look at those links. Uh, we certainly don't make good impression here with our seven links. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe but, maybe you only count the links that counts. Maybe that's why it's twenty-seven. Uh, no, usually it's the other way around. That we have way more, and we have usually the complaints that people say, "Oh, <clears> what do you do with all these crap links? We don't want them. We don't need them. They're old. They're you know." But those are the ones that we usually disavow. But that looks like a data problem in our system. So yeah, um, yeah. So 
if I can share Hrefs with you, mm -hmm. um, and can you guys see it as well, uh, Martin and, uh, and Chris? Uh, I can. Well, I, I think Chris, to mm. share your screen. Yeah, I see your screen. Uh, no, that's my screen. That's me. Ah, oh, oh, oh! Yeah. You need to yeah. share a screen, baby. Oh. Um, oh, share screen. I'm Okay. And, and I'm cheating. I'm cheating in the meantime by looking at uh, by looking at speed factors and things like that. So so. Yeah. But I mean, let's let's talk links first, and then I'll uh, and then mm -hmm. I'll talk through some tech stuff in the meantime. Um, yeah. Okay. So this is a real quick thingy. Um, I can see a lot of coupon some coupon sites, um, but I also see relevant sites. Well, WikiHow, Wikipedia, but I saw something about glass. Do you guys hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, but a lot of these coupon and voucher sites, so I guess they did some link building for that, or they naturally picked that up. Mm -hmm. and let me just see. if I'm just going to hop on page three. I just want to see if I... Yeah, so the international man, I don't know that site. I want to see if I see something that's really relevant, like on topic, because that's what I usually go for when I do link building. Mm -hmm. so beating arts, beat art originals, collections. Oh, these are block spots, uh, beating gem. Oh, it looks like they can actively link building. And there's some uh, bigger sites, but also relevant sites. It, there are, are some block spot sites. It doesn't look super bad to me right away. Mm -hmm. What would you guys say? Or is it too quick of a judgment? Oh. These metrics are not enough for me to, to tell you anything. I see number of links, but the uh, number of yeah. domains, and that is, is not a is, is a qualitative metric. But uh, you know, in LRT, we look beyond that and try to to give a weight of the risk of the links and the power of the links. So when we look at a domain rating and UL rating here, this is uh, tells us that some of these links are on on strong domains. Like, of course, Peer Web is a strong domain, but yeah. that link is on a the uh, PR page rating, I think, yeah. uh, 13, which is a very weak link. And weak links in general are not good and not those links that help you in bulk. Because uh, nowadays, when you have a lot of weak, li weak links, the chance <laughs> is that a lot of them are actually toxic and some of them are helping you. So in that right. segment of very weak links, we usually disavow in the thousands, which you know we've seen in, in so many site links already and we'll probably see at the next site. But um, that is... Uh, the reason why this bulk link building doesn't work anymore. You know, when you fired up XRAMR and, uh, and these other automated link building systems, in the past, you could just, you know, throw stuff against the wall and see what sticks. And some links worked in. But now those that are measured as toxic are dragging you down. And so this right. is what, uh, what what's the problem here that um, actually, without looking at detox risk, I'm not... I'm I've not seen this one, like any of these. Are self good. growth is a really, um, you know, when a link is really, really, really easy to get and everybody has mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. That's what, what that's what I see in this backlink profile. Yeah. But um, so what I would do, so I don't know much about the risk. Like I've, mm -hmm. I've had clients that had these kind of backlink profiles and it didn't have a problem actually. Yeah. Yeah. But it's because they also had a lot of relevant links. So it, it was kind of mixed bag, you know? So they had these uh, foundation links or, or obvious links. Mm -hmm. And then they had a lot of really uh, relevant links. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah, we for sure keep them in the list and we'll show them in the next uh, episode of the show then. Um, did, did the site owner of that site leave any feedback within the form uh, saying specifically what his pain points were with it? Um, yeah. Yeah, I think he did. Yeah, I like give some advice for what you could do for the link building if you guys mm -hmm. are up for it. Yeah, um, go ahead. Yeah, so I would think about um, what who the audience is of the site, but it seems like it's kind of there are a lot of different segments. So maybe you have uh, men that are looking for an anniversary gift, or you have women that are looking for something for their house or whatever. 
So I would try to focus on one of those segments at a time, otherwise it's going to be too confusing. And then think about um, what are sites that those women visit, right? So when, uh, and then try to get a, a, a link from those sites or get a guest post on those sites. And then you have the same audience and it's kind of in the same realm. And the other, that's one way of, of doing it. The other way is just looking for sites that are ranking on the keywords that you want to rank for and then try to get links from those. But I would definitely think about the audience and see where, where they're hanging out. You know, this is all like art stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, history things. And Italy. So a lot of Italian sites or people that want to visit Italy, you know. Yeah. Kind of yeah. I'm wondering if... Um... You know, what do you think about these blog posts? Are these uh, some pages that you would uh, link to? Or oh, where would you, uh, what would you pick as a link target? Mm. Um, okay. So what I usually do is that um, I would see what the top pages are of a site like that. And then try to find out why it's a top page and see if I can expand on that, right? Mm -hmm. But the other thing I would do is look at competitors and see what's working well for them, what's getting a lot of uh, referring domains, and think about which uh, platform these people hang out. So it might be uh, something like Pinterest. Uh -huh. And then I try to use the uh, Content Explorer of Ahrefs and see uh -huh. what gets a lot of repins, because uh -huh. that's a kind of proof of content, you know, and then you can create yeah. something based on that. Uh -huh. um, but it doesn't always have to be some, I think people, I think I said this somewhere else, People think they have to have make this giant dynamic infographic with thousands of survey stats mm -hmm, and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I think it mm -hmm. only works in specific niches. And yeah. in a niche like this, it could be a simple lookup resource, like maybe what type of glass was made in which age, like, I don't know, Rococo, it was in the 19th or 17th century and how much it's worth or something like that. Something really yeah. simple that, that people uh, need. Yeah, yeah. To add some editorial um, content here, they, they, they did it. Uh, it looks like, you know, we, we, we have these blog posts, but um, um, I haven't found one uh, looking around here that, you know, jumps my eye. It immediately brings me to this catalog of many, many different uh, bags. Uh, I'm not sure it's appealing to you as a buyer um, or as a, as a searcher. Um, yeah, it looks a little bit dated. Uh, it looks yeah. like one of those Canva images that you make for a blog post. That you know, mm -hmm. that was um, in the beginning when authority hackers were doing their courses on affiliate sites. They yeah. would show you how to <laughs> do those titles, for instance. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that does look dated. Mm -hmm. I would make it a little bit more interesting looking. Ah, here we got some, yeah. some history stuff, finally. Explore more about Venice. Murano Island. <laughs> I've actually been at Murano Island as well some 20 years ago, but um, I'm sure you could find some more. But you know, here's the food stuff, Doc. Uh, what I'm missing here are call to actions. You know, if you read through all of these, um, the, the walls of text with images in between, the question is, what do you as a webmaster want the user to do here? You know, here's the restaurant now. Mm, yeah, okay. But how does this exact view point of view, uh, uh, the, the current view that I have right now from a photo of restaurants and some text, how does this connect to your business? Is mm. this, um, uh, yeah, how does this connect? It doesn't sell. It doesn't sell your glassware. That's what yeah. I would say. It certainly yeah. sells. I also saw, I also saw that they, the vintage. Glass is gone. If you can mm -hmm. click on that one. Oh, this is somewhat yeah. embarrassing. <laughs> it is very embarrassing to say the least, because this is the main navigation. And if I go through this and I find that there is uh, actually, I thought this glass of Venice thing is about vintage glass. I mean, kind of. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, we shouldn't come down too hard because the topic is really cool. This is something I think a lot of people are very passionate about. Yeah. And I think your site should, um, how do you say, translate that passion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I don't think it would be really hard to do. You know, also maybe 
I, I saw a portrait of a guy making the glass. Those little portraits are great. You, you can make them on YouTube or something and then put them on your side, get some traffic from there or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have a lot to work with. It's not, it's not an accounting. <laughs> yeah. Kind yeah. Of, um, color base. What I, what I was wondering here about the, um, where were the bags? Bags. I didn't, I, I, maybe, maybe we'll let you, uh, go over some technical stuff but before that i want yeah. to mention um is this genuine letter or not how do, oh yeah here he wears seed why why can i not search by you know you know fake letter and genuine letter here these are you know for bags i guess one of the main criteria and um for instance i would like to have a filter to not see any fake at all or the other way around, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. But you, Martin, what do you say? So, I mean, I, I, I absolutely agree with what uh, Bibi said a moment ago. The subject matter of this website is excellent, and it should lend itself really well to people spending a lot of time on the site, people actually navigating around it and looking at different types, uh, different types of glass. Because I mean, it's the kind of thing that people are passionate about anyway. Um, Looking at it from just a purely technical perspective, um, I mean, there's there's a heck of a site navigation at the top. So there's obviously lots of pages on this site. There's obviously lots of individual products and so on and so forth. And that's that's where kind of technical SEO really starts to become very important because when you've got any site that um, that has a high number of pages overall, it uh, becomes very important to make sure that the, the site is easily crawlable and easily understood by Google. Um, You've got to think about this from Google's perspective for a moment. And um, the number one cost that they have as a business globally is maintaining their web index, right? So consequently, everything that you can do to serve your pages to Google in as efficient as possible a manner makes it easier for them to understand your site and also then makes it easier for your site to be returned in organic SERPs. Um, so a couple of notes specifically on that. Um, all you need to do in Chrome is just hit the right mouse button on a page, go to inspect, and then choose. I've zoomed right in on this, so it's easier for people to read, by the way. But uh, just choose sure. Lighthouse from the drop-down menu that you'll probably see on yours. And then and then Chrome goes ahead and just does a quick performance audit for you to give you the kind of pain points that individual browsers will see. But also, you've got to bear in mind that Googlebot also has these problems in rendering your pages. And looking at this one particularly, um, the LCP, so the largest contemporary paint on the page, is just under 10 seconds. So Google term anything above two and a half seconds is moderately bad, and anything above four seconds is very bad. Um, someone had a video on YouTube, I can't remember who, a couple of months ago saying that site speed wasn't important. And um, what I can say is, in every instance that I've looked at site speed specifically getting worse over a time range, it has been inversely proportional to the amount of traffic that that site is getting, particularly in instances where you've got a site that's got, you know, hundreds or, you know, maybe thousands or tens of thousands of pages. So you need to take this stuff very, very seriously. The nice thing about these lighthouse audits is it just tells you underneath what it was that caused the slowdown. And there's, you know, there's a couple of technical things on this site, like, for instance, preloading this font would have saved 2.7 seconds out of the page load time. And there's images that uh, that didn't need to be displayed because they're not shown on first render, for instance. Um, this one I find particularly egregious because it's a simple change that can just be made at a web hosting level that will speed up the site straight away. The old version of HTTP, which this site is being served on, could only send four items down at the same time. So basically what's happening is, on a site like this, where you might be loading in lots of individual assets, um, it needs to wait for one of the assets to finish before it can start putting more of them. So whoever the webmaster is at this site, please, as a priority, kind of speak to your web host and get this upgraded to HTTP2 for a start. But then also go through the other items that you see in this, um, in this Lighthouse error panel, if you like, to speed the site up as much as you possibly can. Um, the next thing that I always like doing when I'm looking through these sites is just grabbing some content, just you know, a random sentence, Googling it and see whether or not that page is the one that comes up first. And if not, what else is in there? I'll zoom in a bit so that you can see this. And 
basically it looks to me like that individual piece of content has either been copied from someone else or it's entirely possible that it was written by this site, but it's been copied by every other site on the internet. I mean, there's 24,000 versions that are closely related to that piece of text. So going back to what I was saying a moment ago about making stuff easy for Google, it has to have a reason to rank any individual page. Now, if your site is hard for Google to traverse and it's hard for Google to efficiently parse and process, which this kind of appears to be, and then once it's done those steps, if it doesn't find anything that's net new for its index, because that's what Google's looking for when it's crawling, the site is essentially of no value to Google. And what you need to really be doing here is building a site that is unique, that's fast, that's efficient, and that adds value to the Google index, because otherwise you're just not going to be able to compete with the keywords that you want. Um, so there's, I mean, there's, there's probably quite a few things that need to be done to tidy up the overall site health of this. Um, but I would, I mean, I would start very much in this webmaster's um, in this webmaster's kind of thought process here as to what do you want to rank for? Rank for which are the pages that you want to rank for? That do they provide a good answer to that? Are they unique and are they fast? And if you can answer all of those questions and you're still not ranking very well, then you really need to focus on building up the equity of those pages by link building and so on and so forth. But I mean, that that can be longer to do uh, and it can be more effort. Also, simultaneously, fixing these things will increase your conversion rate because people will spend longer on the site. They don't have to wait longer for pages to load and so on and so forth. So, I, I mean, there's there's probably a long list of stuff there um, that, uh, that the webmaster can be getting on with. Um, Christoph, any, any, because I know you've done technical SEO as well for a long, long time. Yeah. Um, um, uh, the only thing I want to mention here or add is uh, that uh, I think Cloudflare just announced that they even roll out to some clients HTTP3 already as the next major generation. Yeah. So if you're not on HTTP2 yet, uh, there is actually the new technology HTTP3 um, available, so to say, to some browsers. And we know that these browsers, you know, update Chrome updates um, basically in the background. So HTTP support will be there in no time uh, as soon um, as we, you know, keep talking here, uh, more people get access to HTTP3. And that, you know, would be my recommendation to maybe use Cloudflare for uh, for that specific service. They essentially own half of the internet now anyways, which is the other problem, that if they go down, everything goes down. But um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's the other thing, yeah. And um, yeah, besides that, I think um, I would, uh, you know, I would say the, content that the call to actions on the site were uh, most concerning to me because what's what's that content worth you know if you have that great article there and it ranks how do you bring people to buy from you with that post about some restaurant in venice it's um yeah and and and, and buy means not just buy the glassware it means buying that link every link has to have a story and even if there's money in the play um there is only so much that people are willing to bridge uh, in, in terms of linking. They won't link to everything. So th yeah. th that's what I would work on. You I, know? Mean, and, I didn't read the article itself, obviously, in the time that we've had here. But I mean, oh. to your point just then, if, yeah. if it is about restaurants in Venice or wherever it was, uh, in yeah. Murano or, or wherever, the, wherever the thing was, that very much smacks to me of content for content's sake. To, to your point, yeah, um, and you know, especially in a in a you know a specific niche where there's definitely a large amount of people that would be passionate about this product and the collecting of it and the history of it and so on and so forth. There's so many other opportunities to create fantastic, very product centric content around mm -hmm. it that can mm -hmm. then play part of the overall site flow as well as people are going through checkout and so on and so forth. Um, the, I, I just I would steer away from the content for content's sake or content for link building and focus on rather than doing you know X amount of blog posts per month or whatever it is, just oh, yeah. really focus on what is it that the audience here really wants to read that is tightly related to this yeah. subject. And then write the best possible yeah. stuff about it and have video assets and, you know, yeah. just really focus down in, you know, on it rather than having restaurants in the local area type posts. So, so I, I yeah, fully agree. 
Yeah, yeah, so I'm a little bit curious. Are they a factory that make the glass as well, or is it? Are they selling it from other manufacturers, or? We don't know. From oh, I yeah, look at this, and it looks like a shop. Just yeah. but if they're actually manufacturing it, there's so much more that you can, you know, play with the content. Yeah, because um, I, I was looking online, and I could see uh, people are visiting the factory in Murano Glass. It's it's mm -hmm. it's apparently it's some kind of brand. Um, so if they were, that would be great. And if they're not, then they could uh, capitalize on that. Maybe they are, but it's just it just looks like a little bit neglected. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, Alida! Hi. Alida is here as well. Hi, Alida. <laughs> Just oh, in time for the second side. <laughs> Got to speed up here. Yes, yeah, when I'm getting. <laughs> the kid is awesome. I'm yeah. So, and um, what we will do is we will keep the class of Venice on the. Um, for 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 the next audit and fix that data problem that we had in our system mm -hmm, yeah. then i can say a little bit more the next time just about the linking and uh, what i would assume is you know what i've seen briefly in the hrefs uh, linked list scrolling down is that there are some low quality links that usually need some cleanup uh, just because they piled up over the years uh, they say right. uh, serving since 2008 and with that you have a very high chance that you one have a lot of scraper spam and second maybe did some seo and and, and shady link building that worked until you know it did not work that's okay you know yeah. um there's a lot of people saying you know a lot of people are scared from link building because things stopped working but uh when penguin hit uh, years ago a lot of websites that made a ton of money with really simple and stupid link building they shouldn't complain about that gold rush time that was the good time and then finally google catched up uh, caught up and um I think this is what you need to keep into account. It, the rules just change over time, and you have to change with them. But that doesn't, you know, mean you don't need any links. Yeah. So I also saw in the search results when you were putting the sentence in, there was a wedding mm -hmm. site, wedding.com yeah. or something. So that that would that would be a great example of a, a niche that you could hit because yeah. if if you're yeah. reliant on people visiting the show, I don't think. Well, so I don't know if it's a factory. If it's a factory, then you might also want to have people come over. Mm -hmm. But if you're thinking about online selling, how about all those wedding couples that can't go on a honeymoon because of COVID? So you bring a little Venice to their to their wedding, right? With with a whole glassware mm -hmm. table full mm -hmm. of glassware. That would be true. a really great angle for wedding. That's true. Yeah. yeah, we're in the new reality of COVID, and we see nothing yeah. here, like zero. That's a, a missed opportunity for sure. Yeah. And then people want to know, like, can we ship the glass? Is it going to break and all that stuff? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Yeah. Then uh, let's look at the next site here, the Cogentl. Co 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 Gentle. How do you pronounce it? Cogentl. Co IT. Co um, it looks like some B2B software for logistics to me. EDI services are backend XML interfaces. You know, we had them 20 or, or even 30 years ago before web services and SOAP and, and, you know, JSON and all that stuff was around and was essential household technology. EDI was around between companies. And this is what it looks like. So they are probably serving a very, very... Um, Enterprise, yeah, here Walmart, yeah. OIT, CVS, pharmacy, with uh, with what? Customer support, maybe, or what is it? Oh, integration solution. Yeah. So they they go through the loops and hoops to make this one interface, EDI interface, work with the other one, which is usually involves mapping, data mapping. So very, very technical, very geeky, and uh, yeah. That's, uh, I would say, how I understand this business from this website. Um, although, you know, very niche, it looks like they are catering to a wider market here, trading partners, basics. Um, I, I see 164 domains here in our backlink profile, a risk of 1800, which means there is some stuff to clean up. We got some virus or malware links and nobody wants them. Uh, you shouldn't have too many malware links linking to you because that could easily put you in the neighborhood of those. Mm. And that again could mean that you may be the trip that filter as well. And if you are in that malware filter from safe browsing from Google, 
uh, you wish you just had a Google penalty because getting rid of a Google penalty is usually easier and faster than getting rid of that malware um, flag. So this is one thing. A couple toxic links, a couple, yeah, just a few scraper links that are uh, collateral damage from uh, some negative SEO attack to, on someone else, maybe just for links. Uh, as you can see, I, can, I just work through these different issues that we see for this backlink profile in this moment in time that uh, we kept monitoring for a while without significant changes because we didn't work on that. Um, a little bit of <laughs> actually high risk links, 160. 76 links are links from very high risk websites that we usually recommend to disavow in bulk as well. Yeah. Uh, yesterday in another show, we just did 3000. And then um, there's always a chance that one or two or maybe 10 come back um, here in another notice in a couple minutes saying, here are some links that you disavowed that you maybe should take a second thought on, a second look, right. a second thought. Um, because once you got rid of that all that bulk uh, spam, there is maybe one or two that matched with that pattern fairly close. But once you take out all the others, um, you can undisavow those uh, three or four, and that um, works now, of course, in the system while we are, you know, still working on our own disavow file. Or it, you can also undisavow if you already uploaded it to Google. Uh, quite a lot of people think this is a a once for all, a once forever setting that you would lose that link, uh, but that's not the case. And uh, yeah, this is uh, um, one, one, one reason why I would recommend to revisit some audits over time again. Yeah, we see a little drop here already in the risk. I see some links from PBNs, um, not that dramatic with this volume, you know, 20, what, 32? Pages linking. Okay, but Costco EDI solution, Walmart EDI, Amazon EDI uh, looks a little bit optimized to me. Let's look at these. Right, yeah. Hello, business listings. Oh, that's even, um, what is this? It looks like some business directory, which could be totally cool or be spammy. What do you guys say when you look at this website? Yeah. I, I say that's incredibly spammy. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, and and I can I can say that because see the image that they're using there in the background. I use yeah. that exact same image in most of my slide decks as like the intro page image. So I know it's it's literally the thing that you get when you Google people sat in office or whatever it was that I chose at that point in time. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean that that smacks to me of. 2005, 2007 link building. Yeah. Yeah. Another way to look through these uh, couple links where I'm not so sure if I want to trust the system would be the Link Detox Screener where I could scroll through them. Uh, even, you know, you don't see that right now, but uh, on the keyboard where we highlight the specific HTML code for that page. And uh, once it loads, the page here will be highlighted as well. You would. You would laugh how um, obvious sometimes paid links are marked, you know, with class equals paid or class equals, oh, you know, wow. th this is helpful, you know, not for three links like like here where we go through, but um, I've, I've, I've seen people, you know, audit link by link for 10,000s of links with this system, you know, left hand, right hand, and then uh, like an online gamer. And so yeah. that uh, works. However, um, I, yeah. I don't build links like that. So I don't know if they work or don't work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you've seen businesses have problems because of these kinds yeah. of things, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. And in this case, I would just disavow them because they flagged yeah. all sorts of spam signals. And uh, it's, in this case, it's just uh, the three for Amazon EDI. And something that we don't know from the feedback of the owner is, you know, if you had good rankings for Amazon EDI and rankings for that specific keyword dropped, then you could have right. some link slash keyword penalty that those specific links for that keyword just made you drop for that keyword 
and that is the beauty of the so-called real-time penguin you know the first penguin algorithms punished the whole website dropped minus 99 percent and in 2016 finally all of that stuff got really smart and harder to reverse engineer for us mm -hmm. um, because single keywords single folders single pages now drop in rankings yeah when you link to them and that has always been the case to some extent with some filters but now of course the whole penguin technology uh, is so to say interconnected with that core and i think that's also the reason why we have some core updates where people don't really understand what's going on which is you know the goal of google to make us not understand what's going on but these i would say too risky uh, let me see some other keyword phrases edi solutions edi service provider and api integration edi solutions you know the reason that this phrase here is so big is that you have oh yeah you have some spammy redirect what redirect link from this page and uh, while the, the, the overall metrics here look okay, they are for the redirecting page. That That is just some typically spam link that you maybe built yourself in the past. You don't want any links like that. Uh, well, sometimes the company also doesn't know what the service is doing for them. So yeah, yeah. that can of be course. awkward. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, it's not to blame anyone. You know, I, yeah. I, I say this this is just data this is not just a technical thing and you know this year this works and then the next year google shuts something down and some of these things as they get used and used more and more um they just stop working and you need to adapt and, and in this case clean up um uh, yeah i think it's also like marketers are can be like kids so you have mm -hmm. some kids okay so i'm gonna give you an example yeah uh, so my son um we swear in the house right Mm -hmm. But my son is he's okay with it. He doesn't he doesn't start swearing like nonstop. Mm -hmm. Then his friends came over and he, he swore a little bit and he was like, Oh, am I allowed to swear? And I was like, Yeah, you can swear if you want. <laughs> he was swearing like for five minutes straight. So I think with some marketers it's the same thing. And and, and Google's saying, Okay, you can do this stuff, but don't mm -hmm. push it, you know, it's okay. And then but some people start gaming and scaling and everything and then they burn the whole strategy mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. for everyone yeah I, I i guess once you start uh you know start bragging about it or make google look stupid you know google people look stupid then you're in for trouble yeah that, that's their attention uh, and but uh, not, when somebody starts yeah. selling a course you know the strategy is dead yeah yeah <laughs> Otherwise, exactly or something i don't know but yeah I, I like i like people actually testing the boundaries to be honest because it how would i learn how would i learn about it otherwise mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. all right so who wants um, to take over here let me yeah let me jump in for a second on this mm -hmm. one um, yeah so a couple of observations. I mean, the same as the first site that we looked at, it's it's basically slow. It's not quite as bad as the first site. Um, and there's there's tons of things that can be improved there in Lighthouse. So again, oh, I was going to say, so again, just right mouse click and then press inspect. But this site irritatingly prevents you from clicking the right mouse button on it. Oh, um, no. Okay. no. Oh, oh that's so just, lame. That's super old. It's like it just annoys me senseless. That don't thing, steal right? my source code. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So consequently, just click on the uh, the three dots in the top right hand corner, and then choose uh, Developer Tools, and then click on Lighthouse to get your report as to what needs to be fixed there. Mm -hmm. But um, in this site, as opposed to the previous one, the DOM sizes are all too great. But I, I, I'm not going to go over the Lighthouse stuff again because, um, because I mean, you can do that on your own time. The thing that I found really irritating just on first view is in mobile viewports, that is what the home page looks like with a great big, um, can you, yeah, you guys can see my screen, can't you? Let me uh, make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. But uh, oh, do you know what? Uh, it won't work because my monitor is obviously much taller. But just with a mobile viewport, that site looks atrocious on first render because all you can see is this book a free demo with us. Um, the other oh, thing yeah. I would say is uh, the underlying images behind it are not resolving correctly to the viewport in as much that 
Some of them look squished. Some of them look um, pushed up in the other direction as well when you're looking at this in a mobile viewport. I, I mean, there might be the argument that this is primarily meant to be a business-to-business -business site, so it has a higher than average uh, amount of desktop traffic these days. But, I, you know, let's face it, many people are going to be using a mobile device to search, so that just needs to be fixed to maintain a professional-looking aspect to the site. Mm -hmm. um, I, I ran a quick crawl on it as well, and the other thing that I think is particularly important, this is Sitebulb, by the way, which is pound for pound my favorite web crawler that exists right now. Um, and within it, when you look at the overall site here, the overwhelming majority of the pages are duplicate content. So there are um, 300 and whatever it was, 360 URLs on the site, and 328 of them are identical to each other. They've just got the H1 changed. Um, and what they look like is, I opened one of them up a minute ago. It was one of these tabs down here, wherever it was this one. So it's this EDI services pages here. Um, and, and basically, it's the same page for every one of their partners, just with a different H1 in it. Um, now, presumably, at some point in time, they thought that it might be a good idea to have an individual page for each company that they have EDI solutions for, perhaps, and then just took the default EDI. I mean, I don't know what EDI is. I'm just saying the word out. Yeah. But they took the default content that they had for that, and they've just spread it out to every one of the other pages for each partner that they've got access to. So... Like in that particular instance, what you're doing is you're feeding 85, 90% of your site being the exact same page, just with a different H1, to Google. And going back to what I was saying in the previous audit is if you send, if you send Googlebot into a site and it's difficult for it to parse, and then after it's parsed it, it is only finding duplicate content over and over again, it will very quickly deprioritize you because you're, again, not adding any value to the index. Now, the beautiful benefit of this, though, with it being a B2B site, which probably has relatively low search query volumes, is that I think just, by, I mean, torch all of that stuff that's on there right now, just get rid of those pages entirely, and just go through them programmatically, starting at your most important one first and going down through the list, and write actual relevant things about that connection or whatever the EDI is for that individual data supplier, or whatever the you know stuff that's actually going to be relevant again to the audience that's reading this. Mm -hmm. um, so I fix the page speed items. Make sure the site's easier to crawl, and for God's sake, please don't have eighty-five percent of the site being essentially the same page over and over again. Um, mm -hmm. That would be where I would start with this one. Um, uh, and uh, and yeah, I mean, like how looking at this from a link building perspective, there yeah. was lo loads of links in there from directories and so on and so forth. But if you if you extract that away from your mind, how likely would you be able to be to build links to these pages that are not in any way tailored to, you know, the specifics as to what the title of the page is about? Because, I mean, this isn't about EDI services for a Follett Higher Education Group. It is exactly the same page over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if you were if you were trying to build links to this, I'm assuming that having custom content on each one of those pages would also make that dramatically easier, right? Um, yeah, I think I think so. Well, definitely, it should be targeted at, at the customer. It should be more about them than about selling the product. Yeah. Uh, so it should talk about what, what problems they are, are going to be solved for them. I think EDI is something with data. Data. Our Electronic, data. Integration. Yeah, electronic integration. data. Yeah, so I would definitely dedicate the, the page to the niche. Um, yeah. And then I was also looking at the blog, um, and it was all it was didn't seem very targeted as well to specific uh, niches. So it's more about applications, like how to uh, use the AD, EDI with different um, other systems mm -hmm. than something that talks about the business. So what, what, what does it do for you, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking these are, the audience is probably like procurement managers within IT teams, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. guys who buy it. So I would definitely research what, what, a, what those managers are interested in 
mm-hmm. to solve for their business um, yeah. and then target them. And that way you can also find a lot of prospects. Yeah. So maybe, what, maybe a uh, note. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, I was going to say, I hadn't looked at the blog, but you know what I find really annoying about the blog bit on that site is the content that's on there is probably the content that should be on the EDI landing pages, frankly. Right, because it's about the applications of it, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it looks, I mean, one, it's unique, and two, it is tailored to, like, I just clicked through on the, the Amazon one and the QuickBooks one, and mm-hmm. frankly, those are product descriptions rather than blog posts. Right, I mean, yeah. You know, that's, yeah. and, and annoyingly, I mean, like, that, that content would be more, would certainly be more apt on what I am interpreting they wish the landing pages to actually be so yeah yeah and uh this is actually exactly what i wanted to mention uh bb when you talked about the 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 target audience being procurement manager managers all of these systems have uh procurement modules be it uh oracle jd or any other erp sap of course being very popular in europe microsoft dynamics and they all um historically have these edi interfaces with their suppliers now what i think we saw here in the keywords um let me see where was that in the in the cloud we saw that amazon edi that i talked about before and i think this is that landing page or the sales page for that but connect your business with amazon um is from my perspective too generic if i'm a procurement manager then i would probably google for something like procurement solution to buy from amazon because they they also want to buy from amazon but their systems don't allow because they don't have this edi interface so their problem is um use amazon in my sap or uh, you know like this versus tool versus this query here is probably um, um, um oracle with Amazon or SAP with um, 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 yeah Amazon or any of these other integrations and instead of writing this very generic connect your business with Amazon I would have landing pages for those specific combinations like Sapia does as well you have A yeah, that would be a good and example. you want to connect to B yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, then I'm also yeah EDI services for Amazon that that is the thing but um, yeah okay so where do i sign up i can read all this and then where is the call to action where's the button sign me up take my credit card i want this um but no and instead of this whole block of text this is probably just two or three bullet points that could go besides that so i agree this is um how I, i would also change that block and then you would have an easier life with link building because then suddenly, oh, yeah, definitely. yeah, Walmart EDI. Here we have Walmart EDI is a keyword with a total of five links, yeah. and three of them being toxic. Yeah, we, um, yeah, which is what I wanted to show before. Uh, before we build any new links, I would say uh, those with a power trust of zero, so ninety-six point seven percent of their links. Um, we can still, you know, look at them, but those are not helping you at all. Some of them, them are even dragging you down, like these toxic ones. And I would, of course, you know, still take a moment more, but uh, get rid of them all. Yeah. And then they're not helping. They're rather dragging you down. And what's left here? If we say uh, does not equal zero or is greater than zero. Um, we only have six active links left after recrawling our data sources. That's the problem. And these six active links here are also not very strong. And they're even, you know, there's even (laughs) two high risk links in there. Oh, oh, no, four even. So if I, if I'm being, you know, correct here by our rules, I'm going to disavow them as well. And then I have two links left. That's it. And um, again, if you don't have the landing page to to get those links, then I think you have a lot more problems building new links. And so uh, we're a lot into links, but I would vote for first fixing the on-page 
first fixing the the landing page. Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. and also internal linking if you if you're doing that as well. Yeah, yeah. I can I can I can throw I can puke out any <laughs> links at this site <laughs> I want, but if they're yeah. not if they're not following through to the right pages, it's not going to do anything. Yeah, yeah, and and the problem is if you have generic talk, if 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 the talk here is generic, connect your business with Amazon. You also, you know, do all your link building magic, BB, and then you get a post talking just like that. And if yeah. I'm a procurement manager, I know my SAP and I know EDI, and then I say, this is not useful to me. Yeah. Just yeah. and just picking on that piece of content particularly. Yeah. I mean, this yeah. this company is there to provide data integration services. Yeah. What's the first sentence of that say? Amazon was founded in nineteen by like who cares? That's nothing to do with the product <laughs> that you're trying to sell. Oh yeah. Thanks for actually reading it. You know, yeah. I, it's like come on guys. Um why it's hard right sometimes to find good writers. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. But yeah. um true, but I mean this is yeah. this, Something that I, you know has been a bee in my bonnet for for years and years and years. The content that's on your website is your shop front, and you know yeah. if it if you don't care about it, then why would anyone care about your product? And and more to the point, why would Google care about your website in the first place? Um, so you know it's what we're seeing there from a content perspective being shared across the entire website doesn't cut it. That makes sense. Why all of the links appear to be kind of you know old style low-hanging fruit links that, you know, might have been directories or whatever back in the day. Because why would, you know, the point in Google uh, treating links as, uh, you know, a, a, the primary ranking factor is that your site is remarkable, therefore people are linking to it. If all of your links are ones that have just been, you know, basically built manually by directory submission or whatever the hell it was, then it's fairly simple to Google that your site isn't remarkable and why would it be ranked? Um, so, you know, start with the basics, get the yeah. content right, and then focus on the link building on this. But uh, yeah. I, again, the beautiful benefit of this is it's probably a small search volume market uh, that has a very limited number of keywords. So it's not like you're trying to build 50,000 pages of content here. Start with the top 50 or 80 or yeah. something like that. Make those really good and then build links to those. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if this Amazon integration is the most important business case for them now. Yeah. So the, the, the site I think the, another positive it. is that it uh, has so many applications, but um, you can find many people that are in the same world as you are, but they're not your competitors because it's B two B. Because it's you know you're just yeah. a little yeah. tiny um, chain in a lot of in a whole process. Mm -hmm. And that way, that that's great for link building because you're not you get all these relevant prospects, but they're not competing with you, and yeah. they all they all love content. They all want to uh, hook up, you know. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that's a great point. To, I mean, you're producing something here that is designed to to create interconnections between companies, presumably. Yeah these companies would also be interested in other people using your service because it means that more people are consuming their data and consuming their services at that point. So yeah. like, probably the first set of people, I mean, maybe not Amazon, but the first set of people here that could be you know, considered linking targets would be everyone that's from halfway down their list of size downwards to say, hey, look, we've built this EDI for your product. Mm -hmm. Can yeah. you write something about us? And then you have partners. So that's... Yeah. That you, and you can use them for so many other ways than just the links. You, know. mm -hmm. you can use their databases, <laughs> get into their you know, newsletters, all this stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. let's jump to the next site here, the Vernon Computer Source, staying in the vertical yeah. of computers. Right. Is it, not, oh, <laughs> is it computers? Okay, cool. <laughs> Because I was like, what's EDI? Oh, my God. Yeah, so <laughs> you learn something new every day. Oh, wait. I just clicked away a pop-up that looked really, really important. Look at that pop-up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's no, confusing. Different fonts. <laughs> it's so screamy. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm ah, still here yeah. for you. Uh, great to know. <laughs> we can provide... Oh, yeah. I think it's kind of cute. We're still here for you. That's that, that's great, but just just to just that and not the whole yeah. thing. At least they don't turn off the website when they go on vacation. That's cool. Um, but 
<laughs> what's, what's work from home as a service? Buy or rent notebooks, have your custom image loaded, joined to a domain and ship direct to your employee store. Okay, so we got the, the lockdown. People need to work from home and don't have equipment. So it looks like they jumped on that bandwagon and supplied um, rented hardware, rented out some laptops. Oh, cool. That's a cool idea. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like yeah. it. Oh, and you can get a 50-minute quote. That's cool, Where's too. Martin? He dropped off. Oh, oh. Um, there yeah, you are. Yeah, I was hiding. I was, I was hiding in the background. <laughs> so, uh, let me switch off this here. So, what do you do? What, what should we do with this company? Start on page or look at the links? I go for the uh, go for the links first. I, yeah, I normally but, say that because it gives me five minutes to look at the homepage. <laughs> are, they, are they targeting? Uh, individuals or HR managers or what? I think this is rather a service catering to other IT services, you know, the IT department. Oh. This uh, the typical pain point for an IT department probably was that the boss calls and says, hey, all 100 people need to work from home now, but only 10 got a laptop. So they need to oh, yeah. supply them with 90 laptops, which you couldn't get in, in April, May this year. We had a very, very, very damaged uh, um, cyclist. Um, you know, the, the, the whole um, logistics was broken. You had to wait yeah. up to uh, two months for a new device just because the container ships were not uh, fully booked sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, and this is what these guys seemingly jumped on. And uh, I guess besides that, they also you know, provide computer rental for business in general. So they had that before. Convention meeting, AV rentals, okay. So if you go to some show, a conference, disaster recovery, esports events. Yeah, okay. So in the event business in general, where you need a lot of equipment for a very short time and can rent a beamer, uh, a projector for the same price uh, that it would cost you, you know, right. if you would on eBay, uh, but at least you don't have to care about that because they supply it, they make sure it works, and they have a guy on site there. So that's, um, yeah, I would say businesses, certainly. An individual would rather not buy. Yeah, here we got partners. They probably got some, why partner? Some affiliates that, yeah, that, that sent them leads call now so the lead thing here works yeah and when we look at the anchor text we usually see some hints at you know what they were trying to achieve oh yeah first before we look at anything else uh just this oh. is a typical site uh it's fully fully spammed by the globe and a very popular spam pattern that we already know oh. it's funny that despite them having some of the automated spam, the risk is actually not that high. Uh, and that means to me that they're either, either doing very clean link building or not enough link building at all. Uh, but there is some, some, some hint at a negative SEO attack that we can get rid of with a click here on fix uh, links, money keywords on weak domains. Okay, this is where it starts to get interesting. When we look at the non disavowed um, yeah, I see the usual suspects, Business mm -hmm. Insider, PR Web, Wikipedia. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and we got the dot. Lots of scraper spam from the dot. So all the links with the dot, thanks to Rick Lomas. We even got a filter where, uh, you know, we just this about these 594. Oh, no. An anchor equals. Oh, Itamar is saying something in the comments. Oh. Let me see, around 96 of the organic keywords rank in positions 11 to 100. Lots of opportunities. Yeah, I agree. If they got that far already. And, and that's what it looks like. You know, if you have scraper spam, like we just saw from the globe or this dot scraper spam, then your website has been around for a while and attracted those links as well. Yeah, see, here we got wallpaper spam. So. I think they also don't sell any wallpapers. Um, so these are the typical 
disavows where we have uh, 50 domains here and i don't remember all of them yeah but when we look at the tlds the typical free tlds gatk gq ml cf those are the ones uh domains that you can get for free and uh, those scraper um tools or, or services uh, use those domains um right we can uh disavow that and uh in in fact, actually have a filter set up for that, that could be a tab here. So if you experience that particular type of spam attack or, or scraper attack that you have, uh, then you could put this as a tab here or even uh, in the future, pop up here as one of those recommendations yeah. for you to take care over time. So uh, I, I don't do link audits for my clients, yeah, but I'm gonna yeah. put it in, I'm gonna put them in this tool and then I'm gonna cry probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's usually only in the beginning, you know, there is, um, because we, yeah, what I said in the beginning, we didn't see any links because that thing was broken, but uh, usually people start to cry and say things like, no, 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 you, this is a fake, we don't have so many links, or, <laughs> or we never built these links, and this is usually an unpleasant surprise for people coming in and, and, and then often, you know, blame it on us. Uh, the way this works is, you know, you see the risk going down, down, down here. And we did some disavowing here to the uh, beginning of the week. Yeah. So we dropped from these 2,200 to the, the six, no, 520, six that we have now, uh, which should be what printed here on the next plot but that means we already did some cleaning and then when you are there you don't have all this rubbish holding you back and this is where you know link building really makes sense imagine you have all the rubbish links holding you back and then you add some great links on top it, it kind of doesn't balance out when you got rid of the mm -hmm. um, extra weight from the toxic links you at least can be sure that they won't hold you back. You know, yeah. of course, a lot of people say, yeah, Google said they're going to fix this for me. But I don't know, Martin, you've also been around for long enough to hear all these um, suggestions that Google would, you know, do this and that automatically. And my opinion is um, that they're also just a system and uh, they get better every year, but their intention is not to fix every website problem for webmasters, not on-site right. and not off-site. Yeah? And so better be safe than sorry and keep track. And what I wanted to say is once you have done your initial audit, tracking your risk here is easy. It usually stays yeah. low and then you just have to make sure that you look at the system here, which, which keeps running, uh, to make sure that you make a decision if something pops up. And so, yeah, that's how it works now. And yeah, here's one of those maybe good links disavowed. Mm -hmm. Want to undisavow. Here are 10 links of what we just disavowed uh, look kind of okay, okay-ish. Yeah, oh, Martin some fell off again. Oh. It was my camera again. Don't worry. I'm not. Uh, yeah. How, how come you You're keep going off, That's Martin? That's the most important. I, I'm just sorry. All right. Oh, no. Or if you diarrhea, you keep running to the toilet. <laughs> All right. cool. so Chris, christoph you're, you're like the link dentist you can say like open your mouth actually we made a reference to the dentist you know um there is uh what you see here is uh in this chart the backlink profile coverage you know in our case we spend all the link crawl budget to analyze 100% of the links and there is a cheaper mm -hmm. option to do a basic crawl which sometimes does just 20% or right. 25% but the equivalent in the dentist world would be that you go to the dentist and he just looks on your top left and then oh, yeah. doesn't inspect the other ones which is kind of not the point of going there right yeah uh, so but uh, that comparison to the dentist makes some people uncomfortable let's um it does. Dentist. Yeah. So, but <laughs> yeah. from what is left here, again, uh, I have to say what this website needs is more and better links. Yeah. They have good stuff here from Wikipedia, Reddit, Moss, that Moss? I really like. Yeah. Yeah. So, but 98% uh, are weak. Did you want me to jump in or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
cool. Yeah. Um, I love that they're jumping on the remote working thing because it's going to stay for a while. Um, but when I look at their site, okay, so can I share my screen? Yeah, maybe, go ahead. Uh, so wait, where did I do that? Oh, here. Share screen. I'm really bad. But oh, bad that's not that problem with me. Yeah. I'm always like, I always get lost in Zoom and in all these things. Yeah, you can see my stuff, right? Okay. And start your shows a day earlier. Yes. Than everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Time shows, man. They fuck me up. Um, yeah, so I do like that they that they that they're they're honing in on that thing, right? Mm -hmm. But um, this mass customization of large quantities of technical devices. I'm like, what, what, what? And then it's already going away, the slider, yeah. before I can we read what. So, every time. Yeah, so I would definitely look into what what are you actually, I would I would even go deeper into the whole remote working and how that feels for people and what that your company still can go on, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. And make it more simpler and, and the message, you know, just like those stupid G Steve Jobs, oh, I shouldn't probably say that, but you know those presentations where he just does one word? Yeah. I think that would be good here. And uh, this is also important for link building because when some, and oftentimes when you reach out to a prospect, they actually check the site because they, they want to see what you're about. Um, and this top looks so wide, it looks cheap in a way, you know, like a, like a normal affiliate site almost. Mm -hmm. And then here you start with all your branding stuff. Yeah. Um, so that doesn't look so good as far as link building goes. Well, and can't see a blog. Um, wow, they've been along for. So this would be great to put on the top. This would mm -hmm. build trust with me. You mm -hmm. know, we've been 30 years. COVID has nothing on us. <laughs> but where is the, where is a blog section? Or where is a, did you guys find that anywhere? Maybe How in service. Huh? No, 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 not in service. How it works is probably the blog. Let me see. So there is a blog. Uh, it's linked in the bottom right-hand corner. Um, oh. So right down yeah. the very So Oh, here. Ugh. This is why I usually just use Google to find a blog. I just put the domain and then blog. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't find it. Um, there are no images here. Okay. Working from home. Question. Mm, okay. That's June 2020. That's a little bit bit long ago but it, that's not a huge problem 17 go tips down, go down e posts and then check the date there's there's like a two-year gap between uh blog posts and this as well just as a just as a heads up oh really mm -hmm. oh god yeah yeah, yeah. well that's yeah. cool they, they they jumped in on this thing and they thought this is a chance to you know yeah. uh, become visible again i think mm -hmm. in that, that regards or maybe now they needed the the, the visibility but yeah, seven tips to help you stay productive when you work from home. Everybody's doing that. It's so basic. Yeah, yeah. Would... and it's actually 17 tips, not seven. Uh, yeah, 17 tips, yeah. 17, yeah, yeah. get dressed. So yeah, sure. definitely, definitely find some resources. Maybe, you know, it's about uh, work from home setup. So why aren't you talking about the perfect setup, you know, for this kind of professional or this kind of, for, for a graphical designer or for a programmer? Yeah. Or um, so. So again, think about your, think about the different segments, and then dive deeper into each segment and find their pain point at this point, and then start talking mm -hmm. about that. Um, yeah, that this could be on any other website too. This is just super generic. Getting it's dressed, very, maintaining yeah. your time. Yeah. So what I often do is that I either go to HF Content Explorer, I look what, mm -hmm. what's getting liked, what's getting shared, what's getting referred to. But also I look at trends. So I would be like remote um, remote work trends 2021. And then you find some really current topics. And then I would take one of those topics and then put them in the SERPs again and then see what titles come up. And yeah, that, that's, that's the way I do content ideation. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so yeah, but um, and then I would definitely look into who's you know who's using these kind of setups mm -hmm. and make prospect lists for every single one. Yeah. Exactly. 
Yeah, do you want to uh, jump my screen in, uh, Christoph, if BB, if you're if you're oh. on there, because this one is a this one is a greatest hits of everything that could possibly be wrong from a site speed perspective. It's got a fourteen to seventeen second load time on every page, um, and again, yeah. as I yeah, as I pointed out at the beginning of the call. Um, Anything above four seconds is considered the worst possible by Google. But what's interesting here is, I mean, look, you can this this is the home page that I've brought up here with a 14.4 second load time. But you can recover 10 seconds of it just by fixing these first four items there. Mm -hmm. um, and then ignoring that, um, check how many of the resources are coming in on HTTP one as well. So I, I mean, super low hanging fruit, just that change alone will make a, trama a dramatic difference. Um, but on top of that, the other thing that this site really needs to sort out is, and again, uh, referring back to site bulk crawl data here as well, is uh, both accessibility and mobile friendly. And uh, the reason why this is becoming more and more important, frankly, is the reporting of anything that Google does that is not good on your site or not good on your pages. They're doing that for a reason, and it's not to be nice to you as a site owner. It's to make their parsing of your site easier. Um, so, you know, you really need to focus on those things and make sure that they are as good as can possibly be. Um, because right now there is just a, a ton of stuff in there that can be fixed, tidied up, made better. Um, I mean, the, the, every page has got multiple self-referencing href langs as well and things like that. I mean, it's, it, I, this site needs somewhat of a tear down from a, a front end code perspective as well just to really tidy up on all these things. And for God's sake, please get rid of the, you know, the 10 seconds plus worth of delays in loading all of the pages because of that kind of stuff. That is all fairly simple and easy fixes to do. So I like, I mean, it's not accessible on a mobile device by Google's own accessibility framework. Uh, it's really, really, really damn slow. Like, table stakes these days to be ranking well in Google. And it's super cool that you've been around for 30 years. Um, like, that's awesome. Definitely, you know, focus more in on that. But that doesn't mean that the overall design of the website needs to be, you know, proportionally old as well. So have a, uh, have a bit of a um, kind of a, a roll your sleeves up and get through the stuff that's highlighted on the screen right now first and then see where you net out at afterwards. I mean, it's... My camera's just frozen again. I promise I haven't frozen in space. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, I will, uh, hang on, I'm gonna uh, cut my, oh, I can't even cut my camera off because I'm sharing my screen right now. So, sorry, Christoph, right. you're gonna have to, to stop me from sharing my desktop for a moment so I can uh, okay. reset my camera. There you um, go. Yeah. It's still frozen. Yeah. Still frozen. Yeah. Oh, oh, he's gone. I know, disconnected. <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah. I can take over and he's back here again. Yeah, it's now so I'm used to. Funny. After an hour, yeah. I, I, I curse people because I had a I had a thing for Brighton SEO, a panel, and a friend of mine was on there and he, his connection was horrible. So it's it's the BB curse. Whenever you're in <laughs> thing, you're going down. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm blaming because I've got this. This is a camera hooked up by an Elgato Cam Link, and I'm fairly sure that's the weak uh, link in the chain here. So, so I, I, I can't blame you for it, BB. Elgato, Elgato. Yeah. yeah, the camera. Uh, 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 yep. There El you go. El El Actually, El I can blame you. I didn't yeah. realize it was you. <laughs> yeah. All right. And here is our next site. What do you guys say? This is the website loaded on a mobile phone. Yeah. You see. The whole thing is just this interstitial. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And you can do nothing here, nothing, except that cookie thing. Oh, yeah. Oh. And then it goes away. Oh, OK. No. no. <laughs> well, you got a new pop up here. But I thought you need to click that little black X that you see here to see the guy in his shorts. The thing that's um, really annoying me about Oh, that I like that picture. Well. Sorry. Uh, yeah. I, it's, it annoyed me when I looked at that site for the first time that that little X you've got to close the, the, the entry pop-up on is not a standard X. It looks yeah. weird. So I had to yeah. look for it on the image <laughs> first as well. Yeah. Like, come on, guys. Just, you know, that's uh, don't do that. Yeah. And uh, what yeah. I would say... Um... Maybe people take this as an offense, but you, you are IT guys. 
and it looks like you know some some teenager learning html built the website this is you cannot have so many different font sizes you cannot have you know the thing layout differently uh i mean it should lay out differently but uh, what i saw down here is these um yeah well you don't see it in this tool here that shows so many different uh resolutions but when i look at this uh in full screen size here these logos and the, the website before had the same problem these logos they look bad even when they are so small and when you zoom in when you have an even better eyesight or or screen i mean look at the university of oxford I want the logo of the University of Oxford, you know, stand out like these short-term mm -hmm. rentals here as a vector graphic. And uh, I'm sure you could get it. You did that for the for the logos here. These brands look cool. Why do they look not cool? I mean, Microsoft, McKinsey. Um, yeah. That's that, that's that's not cool. It's not cool. If if your clients include these cool companies, that's even more important than the stuff that you sell. If you if you ask me, because you know whatever you give me 19 laptops uh, or, or or 20 projectors of whatever does the job but if you worked with the university of oxford that one should be big really big and uh we saw that on baby screen also i think uh, it looked something like this i, I have a really small laptop yeah so, no yeah. that's fine everyone i mean I a lot of people have small yeah. laptops yeah and then you use a little tool like Polypane, which is a developer web browser that I also use for, for you know, fixing and looking at our website and looking at at, at websites in in these uh, site clinics. You can tell the problem by, by just scrolling down. This is probably the one. Yeah, look at this. It takes forever to load twenty variations of the website. Mm. Yeah, this is it. Here, it's a little bit bigger than what you had. Probably yours was something like this yeah and so, and the header was really big uh, the, no, yeah. not the big the top part above yeah. the header what do you yeah. call that uh where the logo uh, is uh the navigation about the above header. the navigation uh you know, the, the call to action oh no i just mean all the white space i don't know oh, probably, the white space oh there's okay. probably not a different yeah. uh, different name for it yeah 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 <sighs> Look at this. Um, yeah. I mean, this photo is like, cool. I do like the guy in a in a pink pants. I really like that. <laughs> yeah, it, it's cool, but it's illustrative. It's not, it's mm -hmm. not helping the content. It's just decoration, you know, yeah. like like putting some lipstick on the on the on the on the website. Mm -hmm. But if it's not there, it it should still be cool, and that that's why I think it should be a little bit smaller. So these are some, I would say, design opinions on that but uh because i'm an it guy i look at this i say what your logo is pixelated like hell it looks like made on a commodore 64 i'm not gonna buy from you i'm sorry if this is what no and no no this is where it starts and <laughs> probably ends for what for me at least you know buying yeah. this you know and uh, if you made it yourself cool uh either get better or, or let someone else do it for 15 bucks on on whatever website uh yeah. what i wanted to mention for the technical <laughs> stuff you can use mod page speed uh it's an apache project that um you know if you have web hosting rented somewhere or if you're running your own web server mod page speed does things like compressing css compressing javascript doing the the the, the lazy loading doing um, you know all these things where wordpress users use 20 different plugins for you don't need any of that because it's written in php and that is a problem by itself this is some compiled binary that runs on apache or nginx and does most of the job it's a little bit annoying to configure, but this is what I would recommend. Uh, just, you know, if you need that, if you have a crazy uh, content management system. No, yeah. it looks like WordPress. Yeah, it's WordPress. It's yeah, WordPress okay. from a, a five-year-old. So just judging by the dates that the CSS was uploaded. Okay, okay, five and a half okay. Years old. Yeah, but then, then, then time for a refresh. Yeah, okay, yeah, definitely. Also for security purpose. Um, don't get me started with some security testing tools. You know, there are some little scripts that you can start to find all the ways to hack your blog and you don't want someone to do that on your website. Uh, finally, when we talk about a website, yeah, you got some pages that have links. 
that are not there anymore. So you want to recover those. It's just five or six, six here, which is not a problem. Uh, you have some, no, no redirect chains, nothing dramatic. And so with that, uh, yeah, 10 links, but high potential links to improve. If you want someone to build links, you give him these pages uh, to also build one link maybe to one of those pages because they already have power. They have proportionally more trust. So um, they are more trustworthy than they are powerful. So even a, a, a weak link could help get this link stronger. So this is indirect link building. Um, Could you uh, pull one of those up? Like yeah. the page yeah. that I want to see it. Yeah. So here is one about the iPad third generation, where they were even mentioned. Here, a look. Yeah, we could look at a source preview. And this is a Wikipedia page. And yeah. Needless to say, Wikipedia is trustworthy. They have to this page already 32,000 links from 716 domains. And um, these high potential links are usually those that have more trust than power. So I'm not saying spam links, but let's say the not so trustworthy links could even help improve this type of link because then this page gets a little bit more power. So it's even with the trust. And then the links on that page, of course, are more powerful and they, you know, are still there, obviously, for a while. Let's see, it's here. Yeah, I find this better here in the preview. When you click on source preview, you also get this highlighted. The oh, 98 right. link, yeah. Yeah, otherwise you would. Oh, it's a reference link, right? Yeah, on a reference link here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, and it's no follow, but uh, I would any day spend time, you know, on a link like that despite being marked as no follow, like all the links on Wikipedia. Yeah, so that would be one where that I would, you know, you could even uh, when you have a post, for instance, BB, where they link to the company, uh, maybe that post could also talk about the iPad in general, and then maybe some specific of the third generation and then link to this page. You know, this is very, very on topic for the IT departments and that servers in general, and yeah, would help that link as well. Um, right. And it's not obvious at all to someone, you know, actually looking at that Wikipedia link and then finding them here. But that's essentially where you link twice to yourself. Yeah. Um, Vernon Computer Source, they've got some school uh, scholarship here. Uh -huh. San Diego Mesa College. Yeah, that's another one that has, okay, trust and power, but, you know, at least one power. Oh, look at that. Oh. It's a, a link. Yeah. Scholarship links are a game by itself. And I remember we had a Dejanesio, Dejanesio um, the Dan Petrovich and his company getting a penalty for links of that type. So oh, yeah, this is what I would... You know, maybe be careful. And uh, actually, if you have a penalty in your in your Google Search Console, I would look at these type of links. That they are good, but uh, with all these, you know, look at that. I associate scholarship, and then the next I. What this is super small. Uh, so I have a question for you. Uh -huh. uh, so you've seen a lot of penalties, right? Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. Um, do you sometimes feel that people bank too much on one strategy or or do, that doesn't really matter? Like if, if I had a couple of these links and I had some guest post links and I had some yeah. resource page links and I had some other links yeah, and it was kind of like more spread out, would that spread the risk as well or could it still yeah. be? Okay. No, it, so. it, you want to spread the risk, you know. A natural website uh, has no pattern, has no commonalities there are no clusters of guest right. post links that it's a little bit here a little bit there but um something that is even harder to explain is that this you know now we look at a snapshot in time we look at a link profile here what for all all the links uh being here right now last time crawled october 6. however over time it matters that these guest post links spread out and mix with other strategies Right. We often see people do uh, 100 guest post links. Hmm. 
then they do you know a <laughs> hundred block comments there because the budget is gone and you know all the great links are there and now we need to rank and then uh, what you really need to excel in is to try to mimic the most natural backlink profile growth so growth uh, over time or development over time and this is also what we try to measure in the link velocity trend that just looks at the numbers um, a common mistake is to do a lot at once and then do yeah. nothing because we don't have any budget left for the year now come on when you do link building when you hire bb for an amazing link building campaign you do that to mess with Google to pretend to be natural. And what Matt Cut said is the objective for links is not that they look natural, but that they are natural, of course. And when you do something, let's say in the first quarter, tons of great links, and then the next quarter and the, the, the quarter after that quarter, you only have half or, or even a quarter of the link volume, just by the volume, the link velocity trend will become negative. Negative link velocity trend doesn't mean you lose links. There, there are other metrics for that, but we look at a trend and we look at how stable, how consistent is your link development. And uh, a link velocity trend of minus 63 says the website is still alive, but they ran out of budget in the last two right. years. They, they, they trimmed down their growth. Um, if this would say 99, minus 99 or so, it would be an expired domain that didn't have any new links at all for the last two years, for example. So yeah. this is what we try to explain. And so when you look well, at the relative, overall right? mix, sorry? Yeah. So it's relative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So what and did it before? Exactly. And, and when you look at that, we saw this huge spike here uh, in September where a ton of links were lost and only a couple new ones were won. And um, that is not something that... Uh, looks good to me however because we started tracking that website on september 21 it's very likely that this is just our problem here every crawler has the problem that he finds a new link and then says hey i found a new link but um <laughs> you know hrf samrush majestic all all crawlers have the same problem uh what you want to look at is when was that link placed and this is what we do here uh sorry let me zoom in. First published estimated. We look at the source page and the content that is there and, for instance, directory structures and, and all kinds of hints to find out when that link was placed. We found it two weeks ago because that's where we actually started caring about that website, at, about that backlink profile. But the link exists for approximately four years. And so this is what you need to be aware of, you know, looking at data that is a snapshot right now doesn't tell you about how it developed over time. And uh, this is where the magic lies, the consistency in the link building campaigns over time in, so, well, actually in every marketing. But what time. about like viral stuff? If, if I would mm -hmm. do a linkable asset and it would suddenly get like a lot of links mm -hmm. at once and then after mm -hmm. that, not so much. <laughs> yeah. That, that's usually, you know, people come and say, yeah, link velocity trends is, is a fad because, you know, I, I had this spike in links and, and it did nothing to me. Uh, and uh, if you look at this from a, from a mathematical perspective or, or you know, in, in audio, uh, you, you would say a low pass filter and a high pass filter. If you have some consistency in your link growth and then you have a spike, that is just filtered out. That's an um, outlier. So it's, it's yeah. an outlier if you want. Yeah, exactly. It's not, of course, if you have zero, if, if nothing is going on and you have a spike, that's a different game. Yeah? yeah. So it depends on where you start and where these spikes are. And there are some some stories of someone getting a penalty for getting too many links too fast. Yeah. Um, that was me, you know registering a new domain and getting a, a big newspaper link to me from every page on that new domain. But but that's about it. Uh, and that has nothing to do with, you know, that concept of the link velocity trends over time. Yeah. So in general, yes, if you have spikes, that's normal. Google knows about that. And of course, it's okay. And we also filter those spikes in here. So when you would zoom in here, of course, you could see some daily, uh, um, you know, 
data, but aggregating this on a month level, oh, we don't even have a switcher here on month, you would see that uh, there is still, you know, some fluctuation, which is right. okay. But we try to, you know, take all of that out and look at the last two years on uh, a, a way to filter out those spikes, which is what I think um, Google does as well over time. Of course, but they don't say that. Uh, and they would never call it link velocity trend, of course, because that's, you know, the way I call it. But, uh, yeah, uh, but, uh, yeah, that's a topic I could talk an hour for uh, at least. No, thanks. Yeah, it's, sure. it's helpful for me as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Reminds me that uh, we actually get quite a couple of questions about that topic. We should uh, uh, maybe maybe I'm gonna write up some some new thing about uh, link velocity trends and these examples and the spikes, especially with examples from site clinics. Yeah, and patterns like how yeah. how do you that would be an, an, a good topic for link velocity as well. Like yeah, yeah. how to avoid looking like a pattern. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But being at the same time. So. Exactly. So when we look at this uh, uh, link profile here, for example, where we say only 2% of the links are brand links yeah, and 27% of them are money links, at some point in time, 50% of the backlinks were, 50 uh, were brand links. So what I would love to have is just this snapshot going back in time and watching the link profile grow over time. And then this distribution will change. It changes all the time. You know, maybe yeah. they just received a new link and this changed a little bit. Yeah. But this is how you need to think about it. Not look at, not think about this one uh, sample of today, but think about how does, how, how will this change over time? And frankly, when I look at this, uh, just this chart here, a website that has two percent brand links uh, is not naturally linked. This no. is just not no. No, exactly. you you always have your website, you know, your name, Vernon Computer Source in all types of variations, but we don't see that here. Computer rentals is the first most prominent uh, after this, you know, let's let's remove the, the disavowed ones. Not disavowed, Vernon Computer Source. Ah, wait, this looks better now. Now we got the non-disavowed ones. And when we look at that backlink profile, Ah, yeah, we got 3% brand links. A little bit better, but still not where I want it. Yeah, I would say this should be actually different. You know, maybe 30, 40, 50% of the brand links usually. Um, All right. Yeah. Uh, I think we analyzed this site to death. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I stopped looking at the at the comments. There was a guy an hour ago saying too much white space is making the site look bland. Emo. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Oh, and Itama also agrees. You're still there, Itama? Give us a sign of life. <laughs> Very interesting insights. Thanks for sharing. Oh, you're oh that's nice that. feedback. Thanks. Thanks. You're yeah. Online. So you guys want to do another one or shall we call it a day? Because we got our 90 minutes. That's uh Ooh, 90 minutes. Yeah. I need to I need to bounce in the next five or ten minutes because unfortunately my work day is about to start with uh, client meetings and so on and so forth. Yeah, so. yeah. What time no, is it yours? I'm sorry. What time is it at your? It, it's eleven thirty in the morning for me, um, but I I I, bet I also time shift as well back to West Coast US time at the moment. So consequently, yeah. midday here is nine a.m. there, and that's when basically all my stuff gets started. Um, the the last thing that I was going to say on that last website, but I fell off now. I'm sorry. Chris is gone now. We're, we have <laughs> our we have everything to ourselves. Uh, right, we, well, we've got the place to ourselves now. Let's. Yes. You know, we can, you know, <laughs> I'll take the floor, Martin. Well, uh, the last thing that I was just going to say on that um, on that Vernon computer source is. Um, hey, you hey, make oh no, he's back. Yeah. When, when you look at their testimonials, they're fantastic. They've got testimonials from HP, from Deloitte, from Pfizer. I mean, they've got a ton of good stuff in there. That should be in the header, yo. Yeah. Be. Yeah. Like, I, I appreciate the, you know, uh, due to coronavirus, blah, 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 pop up that dominates the whole page. Like, I appreciate the thinking behind it, but that would be far more valuable to actually have in there. Um, you know, so, so like, there's, this is, 
I just I think there's a lot of opportunity on that website to make it much better, both from a content perspective and from a technical perspective. Um, and then you know it's uh, and then see where you net out. But it's it's a lot of work has gone into it. It's obviously a good company. Um, you know I think it just needs a couple of weeks of attention on the website, and then it will be in a much much better situation. Mm -hmm. So, so, yeah, I mean, go for it. Just go and do. How about Don't getting do. links from those customers? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, should, you sure. should reach out to each of those. Yeah. I mean, they've already reached out, right? Because they've got testimonials from people at them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, it's just like that. That's and, and then everything underneath. If you can get any more testimonials from any of these well-recognized companies. Yeah. Like, and his logos are better quality, too. Yeah, that's also why I always ask people, uh, do you have a list of partners or a list of clients or a list of suppliers? Because those are very easy links to get. Yeah. And, um, oh, yeah. HP and Pfizer linking to you? Yeah. I mean, you, wouldn't, you would dominate your local area if you managed to get two or three of the sites on this list to link to you. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I so in, in the Netherlands, we always say you have the no, you can get the yes. So mm -hmm. why just, mm -hmm. just try? Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Christoph. Yeah. <laughs> then I think we can wrap it up. I say. Yeah. Finally, thank you very much, Bibi. Thank you very much, Martin. It has been a pleasure to do this with you. We only managed to do, I think, four sites. Well, no, oh three. Oh, my God. Was so lame. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, guys, we prepared a long list. We wanted to do, um, I, th I think, 16 or so. We're going to maybe block a day, someday, <laughs> uh, to go through all of them. But, uh, yeah, like I said in the beginning, a disclaimer, we still only pick on, you know, some things that we spot in 10, 15, 20 minutes and projects that are audits just to get the agenda so you know what to prioritize. can take days or weeks or depending on your organization, maybe even month, you know, if, if you need the time, so to say. Uh, so with that, I say thank you very much again, Bibi. Thank you very much, Martin. And yeah, wish you a great day and yeah, nice thank evening. You. Thank you. You rock. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, my light went off. Hey, he's gone. Oh, we're still live. Okay. Oh, bye. Oops. <laughs> bye. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're still alive. <laughs>